Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're watching Batman on film. Hey now, welcome to episode number 42 of the Batman on Film vlog. Rick, are we going to call this an emergency edition of the Batman on Film vlog or just whatever? It's just I, think you already, I think you already did on Twitter, so. Okay, well, it, kind of sort of emergency, whatever. But we, I don't think we, we didn't have this plan today. We're going to try to do, we, we try to do a vlog every week, but something dropped yesterday that was kind of big. And then there was all a bunch of, there's just a bunch of goes with it we wanted to, I want to discuss and uh, get Rick's take as well. So I, oh, I'm Bill Jet Ramey, founder and editor-in-chief of Batman on Film. And of course, with me is my Padna. How many times have you said Padna? Being, being, don't we say that all the time here in Texas, Padna? Maybe from Groves, Texas, down by I, Louisiana. I have never. Not from, not from a never, Dallas site, sir. No, that's a, that's a North Texas, East North Texas, East Texas. So I've never said Padna in no. my life. Never said or, or Warsh. I called anybody that. I ha I say Warsh. Sorry. Warsh. W a r s h. Warsh. Warsh my clothes. Okay. All right. Um, That's me and my late grandmother. We're gonna get to the the meat of it here in just a second. Um, I, I just want to address something real quick. Um, of course, we talked about it. Rick Ben Affleck has officially stepped down as Batman of course that's been two years in the making but whatever you know what I'm talking about right he said the reason why is that he couldn't one of the reasons but he couldn't crack the script I 100% believe him Rick why let me ask you a question why do you why do people find that so hard to believe that he just couldn't come up with a story that he liked I believe what's the, I, I believe what, 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 what's the guy that does storyboards? You know me and names. Jay, uh, Jay, Jay Olivia? Uh, Oliva. Oliva? Yes. I, I think some of it stems from him. No disrespect to him. I think he's great. But according to him, he's read the Bat, the Ben Affleck script, and he thought it was just the best thing since sliced bread. So therefore, people don't think it's the script. They think it was, I don't know, some coup, some conspiracy. I don't know, Bill. Maybe it comes from – maybe he reinforced that uh, – that notion that it can't possibly be the fact that it just wasn't a script that worked. And here's the deal. Maybe two things are true at the same time. Maybe he read a script, and I'm, I'm not going accuse the guy of lying. Maybe he really did love it. But, you know, it wasn't still wasn't quite good enough for both the studio and apparently for, for Affleck either. And that's his opinion, correct? That's his, that's his opinion. Okay. Um, I'm just saying I yes. think that's what reinforced that on well, Twitter. I've seen, other, I've seen some pundits that just like – they couldn't believe it. I, I think there's it's a little bit of a compliment to Ben Affleck as the writer and director that that you can't can't fathom he didn't come couldn't come up with the Batman story. I said that I've said that for over a year. I didn't think I think he was real quick and we're gonna move on. I think he was the moment he was cast as Batman in two thousand thirteen for what would become BVS, it was immediately expected for him to write, direct and star and probably produce a solo Batman film. And why is that? Because he is a great writer and director. Exactly. And I think the pressure should, should have, probably was immense on this dude. You know what I mean? And then, mm -hmm. you, then you combine the fact that he was then viewed as the savior of DC on film after BBS. I, I just, it, it, it became a mess, Rick. It just became a mess. And I, you know, look, maybe the guy just didn't have a story. When you're, you're, you're supposed to do something because you're a guru and maybe you, hey, he's a Batman fan. That doesn't mean you can come up with a, a great Batman story. For him. And who knows? Right. Thoughts? I mean, am I off? No, I think, I, I think that's probably very fair speculation. I think that there was, like I said at the top of the show, apparently the studio or Affleck were not pleased with the script. He said so on Jimmy Kimmel. Now, we all know not to take everything he says on Jimmy Kimmel uh, at face value, well, don't we? But I think now it doesn't right. matter at this right. point. Right, but now right. it doesn't it, matter. It right. did matter before. Okay. Right, right, exactly. Right. Okay, so, hey, look, I'm not calling B BS on, on Jay. I, I, I like Jay. Yeah, uh, me we, too. We've interviewed Jay, Batman on film. I've met Jay at, at Comic-Cons. Uh, um, you know, and that tweet is di was directed toward me. But that's his opinion. And, he ve and also, I think it'd be fair to point out he, he was very invested in that era of DC on film. You know what I mean? He was doing sure. storyboards and stuff for BBS and Justice League and whatever. 
and uh, he, you know, he was a fan of Zach's what Zach was doing. So I'm not, let's it's just let's be fair, you know. And anyway, moving on. But we're still going to talk about Batman. All right, Rick. Yesterday, Revenge of the Fans dropped a story, and it was framed as an exclusive, and it was framed. Is this fair for me to say, Rick? It was framed as basically a done deal. Is that a fair statement? It's certainly, uh, if it's not that, it's damn close. Okay. I want to be fair. I want he's, to be he's, fair. He, he, yes, Mario's our friend. We want yes. to be fair. We always want to be fair, but especially with him. I want to be fair about this. But, uh, you know, the essence still is he's in the final stages, which still doesn't say he's 100% in. Technically, so there is that, but yeah, it was pretty. And I think it was, also, pre, it was pretty definitive without being absolutely definitive. And I would, I would say it, it may be a fair statement to also say that Mario might have meant, meant it to be a bit more not a sure thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it didn't come across, and I can see someone, a fan, reading that and and saying that's a done deal. It's done. Sure. With, with and it, well, and it doesn't help that a thousand outlets picked it up. And, yeah. Okay. And and then, yeah. And so then after yeah. that, like, I don't think he was expecting that because he logged off Twitter and said, "All right, I'm going to bed. Good night." And then I think twenty yeah. minutes later, it's like, "Whoa." Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. So anyway, um, yeah, it became a shitstorm. It, it blew up. Yeah. Uh, right. I, I wrote a story about it. Okay. Now let's just address what happened afterwards. You had three writers from three trades, and I trust the trades, okay? Okay. Variety, The Hollywood Reporter, and The Wrap. Uh-huh. Alberto Gonzalez, Boris Kitt, and who am I leaving out here? Rick. You said Boris else, Kitt. Boris Kitt, Alberto. Yeah, Alberto, and then uh, what about the uh, The Hollywood Reporter or Variety? Yeah. Which one? Of yeah, course, is... Yes, I'm leaving one of those dudes out. I don't want yeah. to. Yeah, so, I can't remember the name either. Let me, let me make sure. Let me make sure. I don't want to get it you, right. you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Justin Kroll from Variety. Oh, Justin okay. Kroll, thank okay. you. You, hit, right. you. You hit all the establishments. That's okay. the most important thing. But Justin they, Kroll, they, yes. they all, in, in various descriptions, um, I don't want to say called bullshit on it. Well, to be fair... Yeah. Um, Umberto and Boris did. Okay. I mean, essentially. Okay, I can't remember what what Justin said exactly, but Boris actually shared it and said, I don't typically debunk bunk stuff, but I got to chime in on this. Yeah, so they, that was they, kinda... they, they, they debunked it. Yeah, yeah. right. And, and then, and then think... Umberto came out and just said, the Army Hammer, yeah. Batman, not true. I can't remember what Justin put. I think his was a little bit more low-key than those. I think it was those. more low-key, and it said, you know, some stuff is on its way. And, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, that was it. Don't necessarily believe what you're hearing here, but the next few days should be interesting or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, let's be, and we're being fair about this, correct, Rick? It, it got debunked by three trades. Yes. Okay. Via Twitter, but whatever. My phone was also blowing up. So, <laughs> so we're in a um, we're in a gray area here, okay? Right. Because let me say this. Um, and I, I kept, I even kept Rick out of the dark, but I was hinting very strongly that, and I will say it, I had heard that Army Hammer was in the mix for this role. Mm-hmm. Now chalk it up as industry scuttlebutt, chalk it up as, um, you know, um, rumor, and which is scuttlebutt, but you know, this stuff comes out and it, but it was strong enough, and it, it was coming from people that I, I trusted. But not once did I ever hear that he was in talks for the role, that it, you know, or the role was his. I, I did hear that it was probably because look, this dude is has, after Lone Ranger, he has taken a lot of uh, obscure type parts, mm-hmm. you know, except for Man from Uncle, which is underrated. I think it's a good movie. He hasn't done any type of um, you know, uh, franchise building genre type films. Okay. Right. And, and he's, you know, uh, he's done call me by my name and stuff like that. And he's become a very accomplished actor. And he's thought of, he's a damn fine actor. Mm-hmm. He's a damn fine actor. You said as much from social network played 
took play two twin brothers, and you didn't even know they they, they weren't twins, you know. Mm. I was I was I was okay. smacked across the head when I found that out. So I would say, it might be possible that he is in the mix, mm -hmm. and maybe it's 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 more on Army Hammer taking the the role as it is going through a casting process from by Warner Brothers and Matt Reeves that he's at the point where I don't know if he would screen test for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. It would, it would be they would approach him and he would look read the script and, you know, make a decision. So perhaps and I'm just throwing this out there because this is a possibility. Maybe Do you think you you think that's where his career is at? That he wouldn't need to screen test? For I think if they because I would I, I would think Christian Bell was Christian, more established no, before no, Batman no, no, begins. Not, not no, not for Bat. No, I would no, not for not after that. Just a longer career, and he was Army Hammer at this point is more established than Christian Bell was in two thousand four. Was at two thousand and three or three. And, I okay. mean, he he did. Okay, that's fair. I don't have yeah. I don't have the arsenal to back yeah. that up. Really, it just didn't sound right. Yeah. But I trust you. I mean, he okay. he done Rain of Fire and. You know, and of course, everybody knew him from, which is a cult film, but, you know, um, American Psycho. So, but, yeah, but yeah, Army Hammer was, was more accomplished. It, I would say that. Okay. Maybe he would screen test, but I, my point is. But no, go, go ahead. You have I, a larger I, Yeah, point. I think the point is, it's, I want to say this. They would have to, there would be some wooing to get him interested to do this type of film again. And maybe this becoming public can throw a monkey wrench into something. And it's not like that. And, and I know I know those three guys from the trades contacted the studio, and there were denials from the studio as well. Which you, with all due respect to Warner Brothers, any other studio, you even sometimes have to take that with a grain of salt. Yes, that's part of the. I'm not calling. It's not lying. It's it's it's, it's not lying. It's business. <laughs> it's just it's just business. It's a business. And yeah, I mean, Ar Army Hammer could be in the room with them. They're like, Shh. no, he's yeah. totally he's not in. No, not yeah. interested. Yeah, you know, I mean, right, yeah. yeah, I mean, you just you never know because they have to. So there's a. Every all the ducks have to be in a row from a yeah. legality standpoint for them to make that announcement. Yes. So, is there? Are we talking about semantics here in terms of the de debunking? Is it not true that he's in the final stages, final talks for the role? Is that the part that's not true? That's possible. Is is he simply or not, is not that, accurate? Is that one hundred percent complete nonsense that he's not? Not, not is he not only is he in the mix, he has no interest in the role, or is he someone that's on Warner Brothers radar, Matt Reeves radar, and he's not in he's not negotiating anything, but he's a, a strong candidate. And any report any reports so, of him being so, in final talks is so basically not true. basically what you're laying out right is there are some potential truths that could make sense of how certain things could get confused, maybe with certain sources, whether it's a Mario source or hell, one of your own sources or whomever, that it's enough to, to, to let a, not a false story, but one that has holes in it that's not quite accurate come about because there is some element of truth to it. And that's a lot of times how these things happen, right? There's yeah. some truth to it, so... It's just like that old uh, exercise when you were a kid, Bill. You had five kids standing around. You whisper something in one kid's ear. By the time it comes back to you, it's, it's quite different. Yes. It, it could be something like that where, hey, this is some accurate information. And then they tell somebody, this is some accurate information. Well, it's a little different from – Well, let me you know, ask the, you this. And then by the time it gets to people like Mario and us, it's yeah. not let quite me ask, yeah. right. Exactly. Right. Let me ask you this. Right. Does it make sense and would you believe that Army Hammer – Mm -hmm. would be someone that's been brought up, his name's been brought up in a meeting at Warner Brothers with Matt Reeves regarding that role. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Is it possible that... I, I, would, I would say I have no... Yeah, anyway, I'll say that with confidence, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I mean just being... I mean, I, we're being just whatever, you know. No, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so is it possible that that he could maybe be interested, but that's... 
the interest from him and the and him being on a short list by Warner Brothers is all that has happened so far. Very much so. And what I think it was Justin out of the three guys, Umberto and uh, Justin and Boris, one of them touched upon specifically that it's not him being Army because Matt Reeves is actually wanting someone even younger than him, right? So I don't know if there's truth to that or not, but I could see that. The man is in his 30s. He looks like he's in his 30s. So I don't know exactly what the script entails and exactly where we're going to meet up with Batman. But if it's a younger Batman they're look that Matt Reeves is looking for, younger than Army Hammer, then Army Hammer's too old. So maybe there's other actors that are more in their 20s. I, who, who knows? The, the bottom line is... Yeah. He's he's talked to Matt Reeves. He's he's met with Matt Reeves. To what extent we don't know exactly, and you know this could potentially be an accurate story, but it could also have it could also fall apart, unfortunately, for the, for those of us that want him. And since Jay Gillen Gyllenhaal is out of the mix, Army's kind of become my guy. So I mean, I'm invested okay. in it. Yeah. Let me ask yeah. you. Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. He met with Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is older than Army Hammer. He's mid thirties. Right. Okay. And yes, we heard reports that uh, he was looking at someone younger, someone in you know, in, in his mid twenties. Mm-hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal ain't in his mid twenties. Mm-hmm. So would it kind of stand to reason that if he met with Jake Gyllenhaal, because we know that that he's looking for someone thirty-ish? And by the way, who says that? Either one of them couldn't look someone in their twenties anyway, with a little makeup and a little hair dye. I mean, I mean, Army Hammer's only thirty-two years old. Mm-hmm. He's still kind of. I mean, he's a handsome dude. He's tall. He's you know he's an athlete, but he still kind of has a baby face a little bit. You know, he's so, thirty-two. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. he looks it. So yeah, yeah, he could he could look twenty-eight. He could be a twenty-eight, twenty-nine-year-old Batman. He could. I mean, for Christ's sakes, he was cast as Batman when he was nine. That's a, that's the yeah. First time. Yeah, he you know? was. You know, that's a good point, Bill. That to because we we know that he met with with Jake. Matt Reeves yeah. did. So it stands to reason that if he met with Jake, he wasn't meeting with him to waste his time. He could at least have a vision for him to be his Batman. I could be a hundred percent wrong because I know how this business works. And and you had a great uh, you had a great analogy, much better than John Travolta, Rick. Let me bring that up again. But the whisper that, thing that, that John Travolta was a great analogy. If you weren't so in my topic, anyway, go ahead, go ahead. That what do you call Listen. that game? You brought up uh, the whisper game and the circle. And I, I wish I could. I think there's an actual name for it. But I'm okay, seeing but that, it. My, my that, seven year old is, is practicing that at school. It's a that, it's a fascinating human okay. experiment. Yes, it's a perfect example. So I am going to give you your props for that. Oh, and, I, and, I, and and I, I I'm with you. I know how it works, and it's a lot like that whisper game. And I yes. have, and I have, I have. It's a force ghost. Is that Anakin Skywalker? Who's that coming in here? This is not going to work. Come on, star. I got to cut this out. Oh, there she goes. Okay. Mother in law. Okay. Mother in law. You should just keep this in it. Okay. <laughs> don't edit this. All right. Go. Um, <laughs> Please don't. The whole train of thought. If I if I keep this in, I I'm having my house remodeled, both bathrooms, keep, and I have contractors keep, here now. Keep it in. You probably heard that door open and close. So it's awesome. I apologize. Actually, uh, uh, Rick, look, Bill, Rick, it's not it, the bathroom. They, they, they can they can handle a door opening in a in a little distraction. At least they can see your face on yes, this episode. I, it's cloudy today. I got that big mi- that m- moon with your with your white dog. face obsessing about my John Travolta point. You know what, Mira, you, know, Mira, you know what window I'm talking about because you've been <laughs> in the office. Is that is that half moon one up there? Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, Let's... okay. So, what was I saying, Rick? So basically, what you were saying is that if it's uh, it, the, you know, these, these actors could look young, your Army Hammer could play a twenty-eight-year-old Batman. Okay, that's okay. that's yeah. basically where you left off. And and I think and I'll bring up bring up the the, the Hall thing. I think it'd be hard for Hall to look twenty-eight. I mean, he's a youngish-looking guy, but I mean, I I just put it this way. I, I talked about the Whisper game. Heard they're going for someone in their thirties. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. How old is Army Hammer? 32. 32. 32. And that's what I heard. And I know that one of those guys from the uh, 
those gentlemen from the trades mentioned the 20 going younger and the 20 something but I'm just I'm th just saying I'm throwing it out there heard it was in the 30s early 30s I think we're getting a Batman in his prime we've mentioned this before Rick I mean Matt Reeves said there's a rogues gallery well if, if there's a rogues gallery right Mm -hmm. then Batman exists and probably has existed. His universe is there. It's not, this is not Batman Begins where it's the beginning and it's forming. He's dropping right in the, we're going to drop right in the middle of I, and I think I think we're going to hear this Batman or this Bruce Wayne do some narration on this thing. And I think there's going to be some flashback sequences. Just call it a hunch. There's, I have no, it's just something I just kind of get a feeling for that I could, I could see Matt Reeves doing with his film based on the descriptions of things. So my point to even saying that is that you could have an, a Batman that's in his mid thirties and there are plenty of references of him, of his, I don't know if origin is the, is, is as far as back it'll go, but certainly like maybe so, so year yeah. one. So if it's a detective story, is it a case that he couldn't solve early on and he's readdressing it and, could be. And, I mean, it's just we some... see him at some point where he's a, a rookieish Batman, and yes. Well, I mean, we have no idea. Is no it? idea. That's no, a, no. This is Rick. Someone will read that, and, and, and next thing you know, it's it's going to be a story. Batman. Well, good. Reports that it's, it's and I'll play this loop if that happens. Yes. It's pure fun speculation on it's, my it's part. Just it's just like that time I just spent, I, I literally speculated and said that that. You know, maybe the Amazons in this universe were are descendants of these ancient Kryptonian astronauts from Man of Steel that we know. You know, it's in the movie. They ventured out. You know, and maybe you know, and uh, you know, Kevin Smith liked my idea actually. But the next the next thing you know, I said it was happening, and there were it was a lot. Pick and they picked up the story. I mean, out there were everywhere. there were a lot of people that called you out on that yes. all that bs we lived through and I, I gotta give some credit i'm not gonna name out handles here but there there, there have been several and that post justice league stuff after the movie came out that reached out and apologized and said, really anyway uh yeah so that's where we're at i think we laid out a lot of possibilities um and i think we addressed everything fairly we addressed it we addressed um the original report and uh, critiqued it in, in a fair manner, would you say, Rick? Yes. Okay. And we addressed, we did point out that three well-connected uh, gentlemen, writers from three trades, debunked it, quote-unquote. Um, there, but there is also, and we also pointed out there may be some ambigu, uh, ambigu, I can't say the word. Some now. ambiguity. Ambiguity in regards of a gray area of, the he's in talks or in final negotiations as compared to i mean you can say yeah that's bullshit but maybe he is on a list maybe he's interested maybe warner brothers is interested so i just want to point out all the possibilities and to be fair to everybody in this whole process okay because uh we'll see we're in we're in that we're in that because one, one one thing i can say we know that mario is not lying he's not writing something he thinks is bs just to Clickbait. I would uh, yes. I think He's not a liar. He got this information from. He somebody. got this information from somebody, and and maybe it turns out to be bad information. It happens. We'll see. It we'll doesn't see. go. And yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes good people can lose credibility on stuff like this when it's just you, you're you trust a reliable source that yes. ends up, you know, not being reliable. I, I just one wanted incident. To, I wanted to point out all the possibilities. I wanted to address it to be fair. To be the fair. whole the whole thing. The whole thing. Be and maybe Mario's it. source is right, and maybe it'll see the light of day, and that's great. We'll see. Because uh -huh. people, Rick, they go from, it was like, he's he's Batman for sure. Then it was like, well, F you, Revenge of the Fans, you are lying SOB, making up stuff. I mean, that's too extreme on both ends, okay? Yeah. So People are riding the highs and riding the yeah, lows. So, much. yeah. There you go. All right, just make it fun. We're just having a, we're just having fun. The stuff that we're tweeting out. I'm a fan of Army Hammer, and I'm invested in him being the next Batman. So I'm just putting out fun little stuff just to put it out in the universe. Doesn't mean that it's doesn't mean anything. It's okay. Just, All right, that's it. Short, fan, short and sweet. Fun. Thank you for watching, uh, everyone. Rick, plug anything if you'd like to plug. Quickly. Just follow me on Twitter at shoerick s h e w r i c k. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it for now.
Yeah, That's just it. follow me on All Twitter. Right. Follow me on Twitter at Batman on Film. Uh, don't forget about the Shazam watch party. And Austin, Texas. Saturday, Saturday April 6th, right, Rick? The 5th Whatever of, that Saturday is. Yeah, Damn, the 5th it fifth it premieres of the fifth. It's the sixth is when the the watch party is at the Alamo Draft House, South Lamar, in Austin, Texas. Not Austin, it Minnesota. Is, Austin, it Texas, is, the capital. It it is the sixth. The sixth. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So for Rick, I'm Bill. We'll catch you next time. Batman on film, authoritative, definitive. And the Dad Gum original. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. Podna. Podna. Say one Podna, Rick. That's what Podna. 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 Go wash my clothes. <laughs>